Good afternoon. I call to order the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners regular meeting of May the 6th. Good afternoon, Madam Commissioners. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We also have with us our clerk of the board and our county administrator. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So we're going to move forward with our first item on the agenda, which is silent prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. I would just ask that if you uh, would like to include uh, the people of India that are going through this devastating uh, virus. So if we could have a moment of silence. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it, for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Samar Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you. And we have a presentation proclaiming May 2021 as Building Safety Month. And I believe, James, are you going to present that? Uh, I am here as, long, uh, as well as the uh, building official, Mike Stalin. And uh -huh. uh, also we have uh, uh, Rick Faulkner, potentially uh, our uh, building inspector uh, available as well. Okay, very good. So would someone like to speak as it relates to what this month proclaims and, and why it's so necessary? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Madam President uh, mm -hmm. and uh, commissioners. Um, uh, May is a uh, building safety month. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's very important from uh, a perspective of uh, uh, making sure that our, uh, all the buildings that are constructed uh, in the county here and also in the, in the nation, uh, that uh, those structures uh, that um, are, are, con are constructed uh, safely. And uh, with summer coming up, um, we, we want to make sure as long as, uh, as well as uh, um, everybody. Um, we want to make sure that uh, construction on these structures is safe and uh, we want to recognize that this is uh, National Building Safety Month. Uh, we have in Hamilton County over 5,000 permits. Um, roughly 10% of those permits are uh, uh, interior residential uh, alterations or uh, residential decks. Uh, those are you know, a lot of DIY uh, projects that uh, people take on. And it's important this time of year as people get ready to uh, take on uh, summer projects that uh, we recognize the, uh, the need for our building codes and the need for building safety. And our building officials are here to make sure we uh, implement uh, the safe, co uh, safe um, uh, codes and also make sure that uh, we review and uh, hopefully everybody who is uh, building something gets their plans mm -hmm. in for review. So we would encourage folks to um, make sure they're submitting their plans uh, to us so that we can review from a safety standpoint mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that uh, our, our constituents here in Hamilton County uh, are, uh, are safe uh, when they're constructing uh, decks and uh, all the other things that uh, are going on here. So we want to recognize that. Uh, Mike, do you have anything to add from there? Um, commissioners, uh, I'm the uh, chief voting official as of last month. Um, and uh, the whole point of our department is to make sure you don't hear about things that go wrong with buildings. You don't hear about a deck collapsing. You don't hear about exits being blocked and people not being yelled out. We make sure that the buildings are safe and we try to uh, help citizens make them safe. And we work with our all the citizens that come in here and help them meet the building codes without making too many hurdles for them to jump over. So I just want to thank you for entrusting us with that responsibility and uh, for uh, following through this procula procula proclamation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mike, and congratulations to you. Um, and fortunately, this year we'll be able to do some renovations on the infrastructure that would be very helpful uh, we as we have monies coming in for that purpose. Uh, I'd like to open it up for my fellow commissioners. 
my Madam Commissioners, Vice President uh, Alicia Reese, would you like to make a comment? Uh, thank you, Madam President. I just uh, joined with you and also happy to support this resolution today. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus. Hey, ditto. Um, congratulations to you and your team. Um, this is one of those functions of the county kind of flies under the radar a bit. Uh, but as you pointed out, it's critically important to the community. So um, delighted to join the chorus uh, recognizing the special recognition. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, did you? Yeah. yeah. Was, okay, go on. Thank you, thank you Madam President. Just, just very briefly, um, and I believe it was Mike uh, that hit on these two incidents, but um, while uh, Commissioner Driehaus is absolutely correct, this uh, is a function that kind of flies underneath the radar. Um, it, it is something that, you know, you just watch the news and every so often it pops up where you'll see and, and thankfully and knock on wood um, hasn't been in Hamilton County, but in, in other communities across the country where you, where, where you will hear uh, about a deck collapsing at, at a restaurant or a deck, a private a residential deck collapsing or a stairwell. Uh, or about a or about a door that was blocked during a fire um, evacuation that that caused injury or death, and those are things that we rely upon uh, James and Mike and their team uh, to help us with uh, to to make sure that the buildings in in Hamilton County remain safe. Um, and so I want to thank uh, James and his team from that perspective, and also the other side, as Mike said, balancing that with the need to get development done. Um, and to have a, a process that uh, developers and those that are um, in the do-it-yourself community uh, uh, find uh, easy and conducive to development as well. And I think our team has come uh, a long way uh, as it relates to that as well, so that we not only have a safe process in Hamilton County, but a process that is conducive uh, to uh, making sure that we can get development done and that the county remains open uh, for, for business. So I want to thank our our, our department for that. And uh, thank you, uh, Madam President, for the time. Thank you. Okay, thank you both. We'll move forward. And Bridget, are there any public comments that you can see in the queue? Not at this time. Okay, thank you. All righty, we have uh, uh, comments and motions from our commissioners, uh, Vice President Reese. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, just wanted to also uh, state that uh, we're stepping up our mobile efforts for the vaccine. Um, and um, the uh, governor has, uh, through the Ohio Department of Health, has given us some additional vans, as well as our bus will be ready to go, but we are mobile in multiple locations and being very aggressive in uh, getting uh, the mobile, uh, the mobile part of the plan, trying to get to people who, you know, haven't gotten that shot yet, um, who need it, um, and going to some uh, places, creative places. I know we were at the movie theater in Kenwood, and we're going to be going to some places uh, throughout the county, and it's a uh, uh, partnership with the uh, city of Cincinnati, as well as our uh, director Moore, as well as our uh, County um, Health Commissioner Kesterman. So I'm um, excited about that. It'll be kicking off uh, tomorrow, but Monday will be kind of full blown and we'll be having some more announcements of places uh, where people will be able to just, it'll pull up and you'll be able to get your shot. So I'm um, excited about that. Also wanted to, um, as we all acknowledge uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, I know all of us have had some great teachers in our lives and uh, certainly some great teachers that are still uh, working every day. So wanted to acknowledge our teachers during uh, this uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, I'm sure uh, later we'll have something on Mental Health Month as we uh, enter that month. And I was happy to join um, uh, both of you uh, with our coroner for the opening of our crime lab and the corner building out in Blue Ash and uh, certainly um, a great accomplishment. So I was happy to join uh, both you, uh, President Dumas and Commissioner Driehaus, as well as uh, Jeff uh, uh, from our administration and so many others. Uh, it was a, a major, major accomplishment. Um, also was happy to uh, join both of you in uh, welcoming the Vice President to uh, Hamilton County, Vice President Kamala uh, Harris, who uh, came and visited. So I was happy to uh, be a part of that and look forward to 
the focus on infrastructure and certainly bringing infrastructure dollars back here uh, to help us with uh, the bridges that we have. We have plenty of them and certainly uh, the Brent Spence, but also uh, the Western Hills Viaduct. So I uh, was excited to welcome her. Um, and uh, also want to acknowledge uh, Regina Williams. Uh, they'll be honoring her tomorrow at uh, Withrow High School. Uh, Regina Williams is a basketball All-American and uh, just got uh, appointed the first African-American female athletic director in Cincinnati mm -hmm. Public Schools. So mm -hmm. and she gets to do it at uh, her alma mater and my alma mater. So um, looking forward tomorrow to uh, uh, honoring her for that uh, accomplishment. And then last but not least, if I got my dates right, uh, Madam President, I think you have a birthday today. So yes. I want to just say happy birthday to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, Commissioner Driehaus. That's also on my list. Happy birthday. Okay. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Yeah, I, I know um, these are, you know, it, it's fun to celebrate birthdays. And so I'm not going to ask you how old you are, um, but congratulations on another year and happy birthday. Thank you. Um, Appreciate and, it. Also, I want to piggyback on um, the vaccine uh, efforts. Um, you know, we at the briefing yesterday talked a lot about the, the city's locations, the county's locations. It has never been easier to get a vaccine in Hamilton County. And so for those that have waited because they wanted to make sure the more vulnerable among us got vaccinated first, they've been vaccinated at a very high rate. And so the time is now uh, to go get your shot. You don't have to make an appointment. You just walk up and there are locations all over the county, convenient to everyone. Um, and they're listed on the Test and Protect Cincy um, website. So please go there, um, look for pharmacies. Um, you know, the hospitals are doing it, the county, the city, we're just all over the place administering vaccines. So I just wanna encourage everybody to, um, to go now um, and try to keep yourself safe and, and keep the rest of the community safe. Um, so two other things. Um, I, I too wanted to mention the um, Crime Lab. Uh, it was a great celebration out at the Crime Lab. It's a huge investment by the county when it comes to the safety of the county, both through um, the work they do for um, in, in partnership with um, Hamilton County Sheriff and, and her deputies and um, you know all the other law enforcement agencies that use that facility uh, for the work they do. And also uh, when we try to understand what is happening to people, especially related to overdoses, from my perspective as the chair of the Addiction Response Coalition, we rely heavily on the coroner's data to understand what the trends are and where we need to be to keep people alive in this community and get them into long-term recovery. And so uh, we work in partnership with the coroner. And so um, I, I've been to the old lab um, and it was very outdated. Uh, and I think she made a, an extra special point of that um, at the opening, but it was it is true that we have definitely upgraded in that building. And so um, she will now be able to do work regionally and make money uh, for the county through that regional effort. So it was exciting to be there with the both of you and others to celebrate that. And um, lastly, I just got back from a tour of the 911. Um, operation. Uh, Andy Knapp, the director of communications, I, I reached out um, after he was on one of our meetings and said, hey, you know, I'd, I'd love to take a tour and, and meet some of the team. And so I went over um, and, you know, we are um, always recruiting for 911. We're always looking for people uh, to do what is a very difficult job, but it's such an important job. Um, I really think it's a bit of a calling when you meet these folks and, and literally see the work that they're doing and some of the stressors that they have to deal with when people are calling in emergency situations. Um, and so our call response time is above state standards. And it has been and it still is above state standards. And I think that speaks to the dedication of that team. Um, at the same time, we are recruiting and bringing in new training classes. And so I just want to put the call out to the community that if you know there's anyone that is interested in doing that work, it is so important to the county, so important to the safety of the residents. Um, they um, should look to apply for that because we're looking for some good people um, mm. to join the ranks. So. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. And that's all I've got. Okay. Thank you very much. Just a couple things. I won't um, rehash what was said as far as where we've gone this week and last week, but 
um, as it relates. It was just really exciting, as everyone was saying, with the ribbon cutting for the coroner's building. And I will have to mention, though, Kamala Harris, when she was here, uh, just a, a short story. We all were able to do just a brief, have a brief photo with her. And when I went in, I just said a couple words about the historical perspective as it relates to being the first African-American on Ham in the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners. And then she left her six foot mark and came over and gave me an elbow uh, bump. So the security was like, no, don't move. So uh, she couldn't resist it. So I haven't washed my elbow uh, oh. since then, but uh, I thought that was exciting. So when they took a picture of us, I'm hoping they got the elbow bump instead of the the other bump. So I was going to bring up about the American Rescue Plan, and I know Jeff is going to talk, uh, say a little bit more about it, but just let the residents know that we're continuing to work on that strategically, and they will be involved in that process. Um, and lastly, I thank all of you for your well wishes as it relates to my birthday. Um, I somewhat put it in perspective uh, because there are, so, there are millions of people who have this day as their special day, even my great nephew, his day is today. But I think about um, millions didn't make it um, with this pandemic and other things, and I'm one of the ones who did. So it really has special significance to me uh, this year um, as we go through uh, this pandemic and go out of this pandemic. So certainly we'll have a great day today. And I thank you all for your wishes. So I'll move forward, uh, Jeff Aludo. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just one uh, quick uh, by-leave comment, no actual by-leaves on the agenda, but just a comment uh, into your point about the American Rescue Plan. Um, we did today have our second uh, external stakeholder meeting. Uh, we had the first one earlier this week and both of them uh, went extremely well, received a lot of great feedback uh, from a lot of our a lot of our partners in the community, um, in particular today, and this is not an all inclusive list, but we heard from uh, the Human Services Chamber, from LISC, uh, from the Greater Cincinnati Hotel Association, the Council on Aging, the Municipal League, uh, some of our many of our our health our health partners, uh, closing the health gap, et cetera. So a lot of great um, community partners, and, and there were more. Um, but heard some of the same things that we've heard in the past as well from some of our other meetings. We heard a lot about affordable housing. We heard about mental health. Uh, we heard about workforce development. And more and more, uh, we continue to hear about workforce shortages and, and, and organizations uh, that just can't uh, get the workforce they need, uh, whether it's in the home health sector or in restaurants or in the hospitality uh, industry, but more and more areas that are looking for workforce that can't uh, find it. So looking at avenues for training and retooling from that perspective, child care continues to come up as a uh, as an increasing burden on families looking to re-engage and re-enter the workforce. So a lot of great information uh, as the administration begins to take uh, this information to pull together what I would consider to be a high level concept plan uh, for the board's consideration uh, in the coming weeks uh, as we look to then move into public hearings uh, and finally, uh, the board's um, uh, approval of, 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 a, of a plan that it can um, ask the administration to advance on its, on its behalf. So uh, happy to answer any questions, but just wanted to provide that update on the process. And I believe on Tuesday, uh, we will um, continue with what has been our trend of having uh, on staff meeting agenda, uh, an opportunity for additional engagement and dialogue with the board on the American Rescue Plan. And I'm hopeful that by that point, uh, we actually have received some treasury, uh, perhaps the funding, uh, but also the treasury guidance, uh, which we continue to hear may be out on uh, May the 10th. So thank you, Madam President. Uh, that concludes my comments. Thank you. Are there any questions as it relates to uh, Jeff's report? Vice President Reese? Uh, no questions. I just wanted to, um, if you could maybe highlight, Jeff, that the rental assistance money, that is an addition to the 150, I don't know, 157 million, we will get additional. Yeah. That's yeah, separate great. or included, I guess. Is the great point because it, as, and I think the board had said something about mm -hmm. this, whether it was Tuesday or last Thursday was, as we look to put together a plan on this, we wanna be inclusive of all the different funding streams uh, that we've received and um, make the best use of those, of those funding streams. So to your point, 
uh, Commissioner, yeah, we have, um, I believe, uh, close to 27 million additional dollars coming through various forms of emergency rental assistance, um, which is on top of money that we put towards rental, rental assistance through the CARES Act and on top of dollars uh, that the city of Cincinnati is receiving for rental assistance as well. So there is a lot of resources out there for, uh, for rental assistance um, and in particular resources that won't have to compete with our um, uh, other programming uh, priorities of the board through the American Rescue Plan. So, uh, but we'll wanna consider all of that as we put together a, a, a broad-based plan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the reason I had asked that um, Madam President, Commissioner mm -hmm. Treehouse, is as we're putting our uh, plan maybe jeff because we may not put that of that 150 million plus dollars we may not put rental assistance in that mm -hmm. plan because we already are going to have we already have a separate line item so i don't know when the plan comes back if that could be maybe jeff included maybe with asterisks so that people don't think we left out rental assistance you know when we deal with the other dollars i just want to make sure they know that mm -hmm. we are covered with the rental assistance. And I think all three of us have said that is a, a top priority. So mm -hmm. I don't know how it could be included in the final report, but maybe it should be uh, acknowledged in it, even though it's not taken away from the $150 million. Yeah, it, it will, to, it's, a great, it's a great point, Commissioner. We will absolutely ensure that it is visibly uh, evident in the plan that we bring forward to the board so that uh, the board as well as uh, the public can see uh, the uh, the the re all all of the resources in their totality and where they're where they're going. Um, we want to make sure that we're not just showing one piece of it with other programming going off in another in another corner. It's a good point. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Well, Thank you, uh, Commissioner Driehaus. Yeah, I was just going to ask um, two things. One is similarly, um, I think it might be helpful to kind of line up some of where the CARES Act dollars went. Uh, so that we can have kind of that refresher as we look at a new funding round um, and make sure that we've kind of addressed some of those needs that we knew were important in the last round. Um, and to Commissioner Reese's point, how, how, that, how those things are continuing to be addressed, whether it's our dollars or the direct allocation from the feds, I think that would be helpful to kind of level set. Um, secondly, I don't know if I missed this, Jeff, did you talk about timing for the administration to get back to us um, with the recommendations? Um, I don't think I did, but um, we've been having conversations about that internally. So we want to have, um, we're shooting for public hearings by the end of the month, right? So um, with, you know, assuming we get the guidance on the 10th, um, uh, the administration is beginning work now that we're concluding the stakeholder sessions on putting together that plan. So the, the idea would be probably within the, the, uh, uh, a week and a half from when we get treasury guidance is when we would deliver uh, a concept plan to the board, uh, which would then give you another week and a half or so until that first public hearing uh, to digest and begin to put your own particular uh, spin and thoughts together on it. Um, I suspect what the board will get, not to get too into the, some of the finer details of it, uh, but you'll get uh, a, uh, it, but this gets to your, um, and Commissioner Reese's uh, earlier points, um, you'll get a, a spreadsheet that will include um, what we've spent through CARES Act, uh, mm -hmm. rescue plan uh, recommendations, as well as uh, other sources of funding like home dollars or some of these other emergency rental assistance funds. And then that will be uh, combined with a, um, a narrative uh, summary as well that would talk a little bit about the concept behind each of these. I wanna leave certainly room for the board's policy uh, recommendations as to how we go about executing on some of these because the concept plan we bring back to the board, while it might talk about an allocation for affordable housing, that the board knows there's multiple ways we can go about implementing affordable housing program. Is it, is it for production? Is it for, uh, for maintenance? Is it for uh, you know, property maintenance? All those different things, or childcare. It could be multiple different ways we implement programs there. Uh, but what we'll be coming back to you with is kind of a high level concept plan that we, then we will work together with the board and with the public on refining. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, Commissioner uh, Driehaus. That was a great point because I know Jeff is always giving us timelines. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll make sure we get that in a, a, a 
you know, quick enough for us to react to it. So thank you. Um, well, we'll move forward on uh, our regular agenda items. Item number one, uh, Jeff, were you going to lead the discussion on that? Jeff. Sorry, com sorry, Commissioner, I muted myself. This is a resolution granting the petition for annexation of uh, 1.6 acres from Columbia Township to the city of Madeira. Um, mm -hmm. uh, before, this is one that the board has discussed uh, prior. Um, I've spoken with the administrator from Columbia Township. There's no, um, there's no controversy or, 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 or conflict in this particular uh, request. I would ask if, if Eric Beck, uh, engineer Eric Beck is on the line, this corresponds with a, um, a report back from the county engineer, uh, specifically as it relates to the, uh, the acceptance of the legal description uh, on this particular annexation. So um, uh, I don't know whether it would be appropriate to take um, one item up or, uh, before the other, but Erica, anything you wanted to say about the legal description and the report of the engineer on this before the board acts? Sure, Jeff. Um, we, we have re reviewed that. Uh, it was submitted back in April. Our officers reviewed that. The legal description is found to be accurate. There were some uh, errors on their original plat. Those have been corrected and everything is now current and accurate and 100% uh, of the property owners have uh, have signed. So um, we have no issues. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any comments by uh, Vice President Reese? No comments. Commissioner Driehaus? Sounds good. Okay, sounds good to me too. I'll make a motion to adopt item number one. Second, Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Mr. Reese. Yes. Mr. Drehaus. Yes. Thank you. We'll move forward with the engineer's office, item number two. Hi, Eric. Good afternoon, um, commissioners. It was good to see you all in person this week. Uh, it's been over a year and it was nice to, to be in person. Mm -hmm. um, item two is, is the report we previously uh, just discussed was for the annexation. Um, I don't know that there's a uh, a need for a vote on that, Jackie, or is there? It's, it's just to be okay. received for the record. Okay, so that's okay. that's submitted for the record. Um, we'll move on to item three. Well, why don't we ju we'll just do that now, Eric. So, okay, sure. Yeah, item number two, I'd like to um, receive for the record. Second. Commissioner Summer, you must? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Greenhouse? Yes. Thank you. Item number sure. three. Mm -hmm. Um, item number three is a resolution awarding a contract to the lowest and best bidder, the John R. Jurgensen Company for the Hubble Road Improvements located in Colerain and Green Townships. Um, it's project number 502017. Their low bid was $882,136.15. It should be noted that that, uh, that bid is about uh, a little over $200,000 less than our engineer's estimate. So we always like when they come in low, it allows us to take that money and put it on other projects. That is excellent. I like hearing that also. I know we all do. So any questions or comments as relates to item number three? Uh, yes, Madam President. And mm -hmm. uh, I totally agree. We love coming in under. I just want to ask um, uh, our engineer, uh, Mr. Beck, do we ever have, when we have these, um, is there room in there for change orders? I know we had another project, not under your, uh, not under your leadership, but we had another project. I think it was a sewer project came in and they they said once they got into it, there were some, you know, more change orders than normal, but most projects have some change orders. So is there wiggle room in that or how does that? Yeah, we, 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 that's a very good question. We typically have an item in our contracts is a contingency item which is between eight or 10% of the contract amount that is set aside in the contract as needed. So we typically do not go over the bid amount. Thank you, thanks. Hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Commissioner Driehaus? No questions. Okay. Uh, I make a motion to adopt item number three. Second. Commissioner Samar Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Item number four. Item number four is a resolution determining the necessity for and concluding that no land or property will be damaged, uh, determining the public convenience and welfare require that the 2021 
resurfacing program located in Anderson, Colerain, Harrison, Miami, Springfield, Sycamore, and Whitewater Townships, Hamilton County, project number 502107. This is for our uh, 2021 resurfacing program. Uh, the list of roads was provided. It's just over 10 miles, and our engineer's estimate is $4 million. Thank you so much. Any questions or comments, uh, Vice President Reese? No questions. Commissioner Driehaus? No questions. Eric, I have a question. Um, it's probably very simple just for me to know because um, I love learning new things. It said determining that the public convenience and welfare require that. Convenience, conveyance, the difference. So convenience is just that it makes it more, oh, I'm giving you the answer, but yes, tell you me. are, and that's good. I, I like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, like, I like that you're giving me answers. Convenience is it's, uh, it's to benefit the public. The conveyance would be uh -huh. if we were transferring something. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So I'd like to make a motion to adopt item number four. Second. Mr. Summer, do you must? Yes. Mr. Reese. Yes. Mr. Dumas. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Beck. You're welcome. Thank you. Glad to be seeing you in person again soon. Okay. I hope so. Okay. So we will move forward. We have a, a couple consent agenda items. Um, and I'll just, um, item number five is a, a budget adjustment um, of 4.3 million for engineer uh, resurfacing and guardrail projects and environmental services building improvements. Uh, item number six is a resolution number P05821 authorizing an exemption to competitive bidding for the purpose of an emergency for public storm sewer pipe repair, which is 100,000. The first one, item number five, was uh, a little over 4 million. Um, and then um, item number seven is a resolution authorizing the purchase of a property insurance program for Hamlin County properties, a little bit over $1 million. I'll open it up, Vice President Reese, if you have any questions or comments. Uh, Madam President, I uh, don't have any questions. Um, just wanted to highlight on the um, insurance, the property insurance and liability insurance. One of the things um, I had asked uh, Jeff in the administration uh, in the future to maybe look into if that is an area that can um, have some inclusion possibly and maybe they already have. Um, I know some of the things um, you had mentioned before maybe these larger contracts and making them you know a little bit smaller where more people can participate mm -hmm. um, and so um, I don't know if Jeff wants to say anything to that but I know uh, we uh, he had indicated something that they would look into for the future so I just wanted to to highlight that as one potential okay. area. Uh, Madam President, happy to speak to it uh, very, very quickly here. And Rodney Laughlin, our risk manager, is also on. Um, yeah, this is something that we typically work through a broker on. And um, I've talked with Rodney about it. I think we're happy to uh, take a look at the, the marketplace uh, to see if we did break it up, um, whether we would be sacrificing anything from the price side at the same time, whether we'd be hitting a new market that might be able to help with some of the competitive environment as, as well. Um, Rodney, anything? Uh, I think our broker was certainly amenable to doing that um, over this uh, next so, policy term. Yes, uh, yes, they were. And uh, so we're looking to do a little bit of research of the market to see uh, who's out there and identify some uh, minority underwriters and car uh, uh, carriers that we can invite to the table. And I think if we part out our portfolio, I think that would be a, an opportunity for um for for others to to come to the table so definitely mm -hmm. uh i plan on coming back uh in the near future with uh with some findings mm -hmm. okay thank you so, President. Oh, thank you um thank you. so rodney i guess the question i'm asking um is that we want to go in and adopt item number seven and then look for futuristically down the road, not very far down the road of how to be more inclusive, correct? That's correct, right. Okay. This is a this is a one year policy. So mm -hmm. it'll okay. be here for renewal before we know it. So uh, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and start doing our research and trying to identify some some other care. Great. Mm -hmm. 
That's Madam great. President, I, uh, yes. I support adopting it. I just wanted to put that point out. I thought that was great mm -hmm. that um, they look into something possibly for the future. Mm -hmm. I support this today. Yeah, it's absolutely awesome to, to look forward toward that. Um, so Commissioner Driehaus. No, uh, it just occurs to me that Robert Bell um, should be looped in here. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. If he hasn't been already. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will, I will do that. Okay. Very good. So um, with all those comments, I'd like to make a motion to adopt items five, six, and seven. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driance? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, any final comments? Commissioner, I think we have, uh, well, there, there are, um, you said five, six, and seven. Uh, we we have eight on there, which is another insurance item. And then I think there's also some uh, items to receive for the record and forward um, related to the uh, sheriff's item as well. And I just printed this off like an hour ago and it wasn't on there. So um, I'm going to ask um, Vice President Reese to lead uh, on item eight then, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Item eight is a resolution authorizing the purchase of a law enforcement liability insurance program for Hamilton County Sheriff in the amount of uh, $118,094. And then um, item number nine uh, for to be received for the records or um, two liquor licenses that have been approved by the Sheriff's Office for us to receive. Um, item number 10 is a mm -hmm. monthly treasure report for us to receive. And item number 11 is a travel request uh, from uh, the coroner for two employees for a uh, conference. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you for all of that um, because um, it's interesting. I don't know with the website being revised or whatever because I actually remember the liquor license when I looked at it. So we'll deal with that later. But um, I'm gonna, uh, Vice President Reese, I'm gonna allow you just to lead that whole process from, if you don't mind, from item to go on to item eight and uh, just lead that. So Vice we, President Reese, May real quick. Yes. Um, you'll be adopting resolution number eight, uh, receiving for the record uh, numbers nine and 10, and then approving the travel item uh, number 11. Okay, so um, I make a motion to adopt item number eight to receive for the record item number nine and 10 and to approve item number 11. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, anything else to come before uh, the commission? No, no further business. No, well, I'm going to get my party on from the basement <laughs> up to the kitchen. <laughs> so thank you all so much. And I thank you, Vice President Reese, for, for filling in. I'm going to figure out how I didn't have the, the rest of this. Okay. But anyway, have a great, fantastic day. Because okay. I Happy birthday. Do we have to have a motion to adjourn? Yes, we do. Okay. And I'm gonna, <laughs> we're going to do that. Um, thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Drills? Yes. Thank you so much.